Hey everyone, so uh, I'm doing a little pre-recording of the Chapter 9 lecture, which is uh, Responsive Web Design with Flexbox. And so, last chapter we got into Responsive Web Design, but um, we were using media queries um, to handle uh, a lot of the different devices and um, viewports that that can um, take place. However, uh, the media queries can be pretty challenging um, because of uh, having to write the same code over and over and over many times over uh, for all the different devices and all the different resolutions and all the different sizes. And so, <clears throat> um, excuse me, there are other tools um, that aren't so uh, fine grain precisioned. In other words, um, you can do a lot of the same work without necessarily writing media queries. And so uh, while media queries are a very popular tool and very commonly used, um, there are other tools that can do the same kind of, of job. And one of those tools is Flexbox. And so um, Flexbox is a little bit um, easier to use, I would say, than media queries. It's just a bunch of CSS. You just have to learn how to write CSS uh, to to get our uh, page to respond that w the way that we want um, with with a bunch of CSS properties uh, and values uh, as as it goes in, in with CSS. And so, uh, again, this is all about learning to code our site in a responsive manner. So in my normal form, like, why is this important? Well, again, it's 2020. Uh, for the past 13 years, we've been making websites that need to look good in mobile and, and uh, various other formats, tablet, you know, whatever, whatever size dimensions, the screen that you're viewing my website uh, happens to be we need to make a website that looks good in response to that so it's just the whole idea behind responsive web design um, <clears throat> so we're gonna uh, use Flexbox for page layout um, so that's w what Flexbox is used for so we go back to I think it was chapter 6 when we first started talking about uh, page layout and we were using floats so Flexbox is going to replace our floats and our page layout, except for it's going to have a little bit more control over <clears throat> where content goes. Um, so inside of a Flexbox, you have flex items. Uh, so so the, the box is the container. The items are the individual things inside of the container. So the, the container could be a div. And, and so you would turn the div into a flex box and then inside of the div you could have a bunch of section tags and each section tag could be a flex item. Uh, you're going to find out there's a main axis and a cross axis and a flex direction and so um, well, that, that's on the next slide actually. Kind of explore those terms. And then uh, when we change the flex direction it changes we'll find out it changes what the main axis is and it changes what the cross cross axis is um, and then how how that by changing the flex direction also changes uh, justify content and align items because those work along the main and cross axis and so by default you know when we're looking at a flex box um, you've got a main axis and a cross axis and so you know outside here the solid black line um, you know we just have what represents the box and so you could think of that as a div tag when you turn the borders on obviously the div is a box and that's the beginning of the box model and by default the main axis means things are going to um, align across the main axis by default and so um, items as as uh, kind of a default will align on the main axis going across uh, going across the page which isn't necessarily the case I mean if you just think about 
um, you know, a div tag, and inside of the div tag you have sections, okay, uh, kind of the normal flow. The normal flow, if you've got a, a container div and they got a bunch of sections inside of that, all of those section tags are block level elements and so they cause line breaks and so those block level elements go down the page. Well here we're kind of changing that. If we have a div tag as our parent and we have a bunch of section tags as the flex items, as the items inside of the div, the main axis is going to go across. So, so we're going to see how that works and in fact I'll, I can code that real quick um, and then we've got the cross axis um, which you can kind of specify okay well do I want do I want my my div uh, my not my div items my flex items to go kind of at the top of the cross axis kind of in the middle of the cross axis or at the bottom of the cross axis and so you can you can tell it where to go. You can tell all the elements where to go inside of the box. And so with these two axes, you could say, okay, I want something in the bottom left. I want something in the bottom right, top right, top left, middle middle. You've got all that control. Um, and so here, what I want to do to kind of start is just take a container. I want to take a parent. And I want to tell the parent, which again is a container, to display flex. And so we'll, we'll just kind of code this real quick so you can see the results of what I'm talking about and how this is used and how and you can give it an idea of container if there's one thing or if there's multiple things. So let's just have a container with three sections inside of them. And like I was saying just a minute ago, kind of the default behavior is for these sections to be block level elements. And so they're stacked on top of one another. But if I go into my style and I target container, which is my parent, and you can see the first CSS that we're going to learn to write is display colon flex. And so on slide four here, you could see now they've got a class of container. I've got a an ID, no difference, uh, you know, unless an ID is a, a single element. A, a class is multiple elements. So since I only have one element, I'm just using an ID. Uh, and I say display flex. So let's see. So to get the flex box started, this is all you do to get started. And if I launch this real quick, now you could see immediately we've got different behavior, right? By default, those were block level elements, so they were stacked on top of each other. But now the default is for these different elements to go across the main axis. And the main axis by default is horizontal. And so, you know, um, the, the challenge of getting the floats the challenge of getting the floats to align, you know, across the page. Uh, kind of take a look at what this looks like. Our container goes all the way across the page, and then inside of there are sections, kind of are like little inline sections. And so to get to get things on the same row becomes super simple. Just tell the the parent to display display flex, and then er everything inside of that is now on the same row. All right. So that's that's all that it takes to get started using Flexbox, okay? And what you're going to find out is from there, uh, from there, there's a lot of flexibility on moving these things around, moving these sections around, okay? So um, there is also a flex direction. And so by default, the flex direction is in a row. But if I wanted to change that, I want to say, okay, let's do flex direction column. So let's do flex direction column. I need to stop closing this. I just such a bad habit of always closing this. Okay, so that kind of is what you might expect. But there's also row reverse. Now row reverse, look at what that did. 
it put our first section all the way over to the right. Put our second section in, in the top to bottom in the HTML, our second section kind of floated to the right next to it. So this is kind of like a, almost like a float right, if you will. It moved everything over to the right hand side. So row reverse behave that way. Keep in mind a normal flex direction is simply row, which does that. And just like there's row reverse, you might also guess there is column reverse. So column reverse does to the bottom of the is basically as low as it can go because here's our page isn't any bigger than this. You can see our page only goes to here right now of content. So it's going to go as low as it can in the container and then it's going to put section one, two, and three. Okay, and one thing to keep in mind when you're changing the flex direction, changing the flex direction can change the main and cross axis. And so if I change this from row to column, well now the main axis is vertical and the cross axis is horizontal which is the opposite of the default. Okay, column or column reverse. It, that, that changes the direction of the main and cross axis. And that's gonna be important the more that we start to play with this. Um, we're gonna be able to move content around differently. Okay, but real simply, that's, that's the beginning of Display Flex. <clears throat> of Flexbox, I should say. And you can kind of see here, um, all they have is they have a parent, unordered list. They tell that unordered list to display flex, and they say flex direction column, and that's how they're getting their vertical nav bar um, in this case. Okay, now we have justify content. And justify content is a great property. So this is a property just like you know the display property. We have the justify content. And what this does is it says okay, along the main axis, how do we want to align our content? So right now we've got three sections inside of a div and by default they just kind of go left to right. So the default justify content is flex start. You can see here, if I justify content to the end, then it's gonna to go to the end of the row. So let's do justify content flex end. Now you could see here, there's, it's, it's not like changing the flex direction because now from the left to right we go section one, section two, section three. When we change the flex direction, that actually changed the order of these sections uh, to be kind of reverse of what they are right now. Okay, so this is justify content, but let's let's look at some of the other values, right? Center. Oh, thankfully, center. I almost said that with a lisp. Justify content center. Flexbox makes it real easy to get something right in the middle of the screen. And so here we get all three of our sections centered. And in fact, what I might do is instead of just putting a little content, let me put a little bit more content in here. Put some lorem ipsum. Okay, and then what, I, what I'm gonna do so that this just isn't all running into one another. <clears throat> I'm gonna use the uh, nth child selector. So uh, it looks like this, section colon nth 
child, and I'll just say one, and you can see what that does is that makes the first section red. So nth child, even though we have three different sections without putting IDs on them, we could say, okay, section nth child two, nth child three, Now they're a little bit, now, now the divs have a little bit more content in them. And so you could see how that looks. Um, this is what still doing justify content center. Let me take out justify content. A little bit hard to see with this because there's just enough content that it's going to kind of evenly space everything out. Um, let me see if I change the width of my sections. Let's say all sections. Let's do a width of uh, Okay, so that's working. So let me, instead of doing 100 pixel, let me just do 25%. Let me format this. Okay, all I'm doing is formatting my sections here uh, for the demonstration. And so here you could see this is a flex start. So we have a Justify content of flex start, but if I change that now to center, you could see that behaves a little bit differently. So this is flex center, and I believe I showed flex end. And so justify content, so if we're using flex direction, display flex, flex direction, justify, content determines how items are aligned on the main axis. Okay, and you saw three different demonstrations of that. We saw flex start, flex end, we have center, uh, space between, space around, and space evenly. I guess I don't really need to demonstrate all of these um, because you kind of get the idea based on this picture of how this is working and, and how it's useful right to get something in the center of the page you know horizontally it's pretty simple to put it in a flex box um, and you know justify content center and so one particular use of this when you think about your nav bars well your nav bars are typically in a list and we would tell that to display flex and then we would justify content with space evenly let's kind of look back here space evenly is equal measurements between all of the elements and so whatever space is left uh, it's going to be divided evenly on all sides of each element so we have equal amounts of space in all the open spots okay space around has it's not even measurements you can kind of tell as you look closer on this there's a little bit of space to the left and a little bit of space to the right on on the outsides but on the insides there's more space right so space around is similar to space evenly but just slight differences and then space between is obviously no space on the left, no space on the right, and, and uh, you know, then the center element just right in the middle there. So space between, space around, space evenly, all kind of similar, but, but different enough um, to see the difference once you <clears throat> look at that for a little bit. 
So space evenly is really good for our nav bars. Um, so, you know. Link one, link two, link three, link four, link five. Kind of save that up, launch the page. Let's take uh, Okay, so we got like a little header here. Let's pretend that's in our header. And then now we're working on our nav bar underneath. Um, so our nav bar, let's just do display flex on our nav bar. And you'll notice that our links are suddenly in line. And then let's do justify content space evenly how easy is that to make a nav bar this tool this flex box um, is popular and it's useful for for obvious reasons uh, it's a great tool I'm a big fan big fan of flex box okay I mean, really all you have to do after that is say list style type of none You know, get rid of the bullets, and and there's your nav bar. It's all even, and you know what? Here's what I haven't shown. As I resize, just everything kind of works naturally. Now, what you might do, you know, once you get to a small enough size, you might want your nav bar to collapse. You might want this style differently. What I'm not saying is that Flexbox replaces media queries, okay? But it does make kind of the natural flow of the page respond better than, than just working with floats, okay? Because I would probably, at like this point, at some point in here, when it starts getting ugly and I don't like it, I'm probably gonna write some media queries and change some things, okay? So in a lot of cases, you're using both. You're using Flexbox and media queries. Okay, so by, by no means does it replace media queries, but it's very nice. Very nice tool. Well, again, justify content is the property that helps us align things on the main axis. Well, you might, you might guess that align items, align items is then the cross axis. Okay, so by default, on the cross axis, it's kind of up at the start, which is the top. Well, we could also align items at the bottom, which is the flex end. So now we're, again, we're still in our row, so our, by default, the uh, flex box goes across the main axis. You can kind of see here, there's a main start, which is the left, and a main end, which is the right. On the cross axis, you got a cross start, which is the top, and a uh, cross end, which is the bottom. Right. So by default, you start at the cross start and the main start. Let's see what happens if we take our... first flex box and let's change it to be flex end. Uh, let's go into here. Now our container, again this is the align items property. Align items at the flex end. Now the theory would be, well, that it puts things kind of down at the bottom. And you can see that since this paragraph is a little bit smaller, I guess there's a little bit less text in here, that it's kind of aligned at the bottom. 
um, again, if I comment this one out, you can see the contents aligned to the top, and you can see, again, there's a little bit less content in this second paragraph. The words are a little bit shorter. Um, it works a little bit better when you set like a height, like a, Now you could see that each one of these has the default height and so there's a little bit more space. And now if I change this, you could see they're, they're taking up more space. It's kind of weird with uh, when I inspect. Because this bar interferes with its uh, responsiveness. But you could definitely see that this container is taking up more space and that the content is going to the flex end of the cross axis. So that's align items. And again, a very useful thing is center. So align items, let's do align item center. So what we got here is justify content center, align item center. What does that look like? Well, that's center center. That's right in the middle. That's center on the main axis and that's center on the cross axis. So what, what that is actually really useful for, if you just had one item, let me comment out these two sections. If you just had one item and you wanna get it in the absolute kind of middle of a container. So our container has a height and it has a width and we just want to get one item like in the center center. Flexbox makes it that easy. So I don't know why this has always been, it's just kind of been a thing with web developers. Like how do you get something in the middle? Like not only in the middle of, you know, maybe in the middle of the page or middle of the container or you just always want something in the middle. Um, Flexbox makes it super simple to just get something centered. And so they solve the problem of getting something, you know, right in the middle. If you've got one item, you know, tell that container to display flex, justify content center, that's your main axis, align item center, that's your cross axis, and, and you get something right in the middle of the container that it's in. See, so that's, that's the middle of the container that it's in, and that kind of shows that when I highlight the container. Very cool stuff. So, so very useful, very useful. Um, align items baseline, you can kind of see um, even with items, they have different heights, as I demonstrated earlier. They had different heights because there was more or less content. You can get them all to have the same baseline, so they don't, so that the paragraphs don't. Um, let me let me take these comments out, kind of show you this. Okay, let's bring it back. Okay, so right now, um, this is center center, but because this middle one has a different height due to its content, how much content's in it, let's change this to be baseline. So align items on a baseline. And if you were to get rid of that, really that just kind of affects the, uh, almost like the height almost. But the idea is that they all have kind of like a center line as far as um, what would be considered the baseline. So they're um, in line with one another, I guess you would say. Okay, 
Now, if if you've got you know three elements and you and you want one individual uh, to kind of not follow the same alignment, you can you can use the align self property and change that. For example, I could target this second one and I can align self. At the flex end and so with these let's just keep it the default which is the flex start so two of them will be at the flex start one of them will be at the flex end I close the page again stop doing that and so you can see the paragraphs you can see these are at the flex start and this guy is a different alignment he's at the flex end Um, the default behavior, and I, I kind of ran into this earlier, is that all of the items are going to be scrunched onto one line. And so I had these paragraphs, and they're all, by default, um, trying, to, trying to fit. And so let me bring this back. We got Justify Content Center. And that's what's happening. Um, let's see what happens if I change this property, which is flex wrap. Flex wrap will allow items to scroll onto another row. And so let's just do flex wrap of wrap. You can see no wrap is the default. All items, each each item inside of a container of inside of a flex box is called a flex item. Um, so no wrap. All flex items will be on one line. Wrap flex items will wrap onto multiple lines from top to bottom. And so you apply the flex wrap to the container. So let's go to the container. Flex wrap of wrap. And let me take a look at this. Okay, I think what's happening <clears throat> is that when I have a width on each section, then they're just still going to all fit on one line. But if I increase that width, maybe if I do 40% for each section, well now it's going to start to wrap over. Keep in mind I still have justify content center. So it's not, it's essentially overflowing, but it's still being centered. And so again, kind of responsive behavior. But the, the main reason, just a second ago, when um, they weren't wrapping is because they didn't need to. There wasn't enough space. When each one was only 25%, it added up to 75% and there was still room. So flex wrap of wrap um, gets each items to go on to multiple rows instead of being on one row. And then when you have multiple rows of content okay we have align content which oftentimes is confused with align items when I go back to number eight align items is how things are aligned on the cross axis whereas align content it's still the cross axis but it's more, now we have rows and we have columns. And so, you know, there's just more elements to consider. It's, it's, if you have flex wrap, then you're instead, you're using align content on the cross axis. Instead of if there's no flex wrap, 
then we use align items, which is just a previous slide. Okay, so if we have wrapping, we use align content. If we don't have wrapping, we use align items to stack things on the cross axis, to stack things, to stack uh, our elements on the cross axis. So again, a lot of this is gonna you know, come with practice and I'm trying to take it slow a little bit, but here we are and we're you know, 35 minutes into a lecture and we've covered a whole lot of you know, properties and moving things around and default behaviors and all these new terms. Um, so it's gonna be really important to practice this. Okay, now one thing that I tend to forget, as, as I've done in this uh, lecture already in my demonstration, is that <clears throat> instead of using the normal width as a percentage, uh, with Flexbox, we can use what's called flex basis. And the flex basis can represent the width of an element um, before the remaining space is distributed. So uh, you can kind of read here, basically it's the width of an element before the remaining space is distributed. It can be a length or a keyword. The auto means look at my width and my height property. Um, so by default, you know, flex basis looks at the width of an element. Um, but if we want to change that with flex basis, so, you know, let's, let's use my example here. Again, I've got three sections. And we could say the flex basis of this one is 25%. So it adds up to 100%. So it makes it nice and clean because the problem with width is that a lot of times width is inherited, you know. Uh, so if your parent is 80% width, you know, then or 80% of the uh, you know viewport width, then um, you know, then you're left with. Uh, 80% so then you got another child in there which adds up they all all the elements in there would have to add up to a hundred percent so this is just I think I guess that was a bad example rewind that I need to edit that out but I just think it's a little bit cleaner I, I guess is what this boils down to than using the width it's a little bit easier uh, because it just adds up to a hundred percent for this row and if we look at it you know, you could see we got 25, 50, and 25. And then as you resize, they maintain those portions, 25, 50, and 25. Any, any, at any point you look at it, it maintains those portions. Now, they, they actually make it customizable enough that if you want some elements to grow faster than the others, you can do that. So if we do you know, let's just say they're all 33%. So let's take a look at that. So they're all 33% or one third. Then we can do a flex grow, which means as, as you get more space, we'll set and these are all relative measurements, so these two are going to grow at the same. And let's do a flex grow of three on this one. So that's going to grow three times faster. Let's remove the flex basis here. Ooh, I still have the wrap. Let's get rid of the flex wrap. Pause this here, one second. 
Oh, I saw my mistake. We need to set a flex basis to be a size, like a hard size, like a 200 pixels instead of a percentage. So it wasn't the flex basis that was the problem. It was that the flex basis was a percentage. And that's why they were just remaining 33%. But if we do a flex basis of something like 100 pixels, And again, this middle one, after, you know, once they're all 100 pixels and then they continue to grow, this middle one should grow faster than the outside ones, is the idea. And you can kind of see at some point they're all about the same size, but as they get bigger, you can see that middle one definitely grows faster. And then maybe back here, whatever, they're, they're all about 100 pixels wide. And then as it grows, that middle one grows faster. So that is flex grow and then of course they have flex shrink as well same kind of deals that you set a basis to be a, a hard number and so we'll say we'll, we'll say uh, we'll say 250 sure and then uh, here in this example the nav uh, will shrink not quite as fast as the section in the aside. So let's let's bring this into our example. So um, let's make our flex basis for all three of these to be. Let's just do three hundred. You got flex grow. Let's just do flex shrink of one. So they can shrink and grow at different paces. Um, So these outside ones have a flex shrink of one. The inside one has a flex shrink of zero. So you could see the outside ones shrink at essentially twice the rate as our inside. And then as they grow, the outside one grows twice as fast as the inside ones. Or the inside one grows twice as fast as the outside ones. So lots of customization is saying, you know, well, I want this one to grow faster than this one. I want to grow slower, you know, maybe more than we're going to use in this class. You know, this is this is really getting into the inner sides of Flexbox and tons of control. I, I think at an introductory level, I don't think we're going to do a whole lot of that. Um, but again, having the control is a good thing. There's actually a shorthand. Uh, for flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis. And so when I look at this, we got flex. The one represents the grow. The second one represents the shrink. And the third number represents the flex basis. And so when I'm looking at these three properties, I could shorthand that by saying flex colon grow which was three shrink which was zero basis was 300 pixels so this line becomes the shorthand for those three lines it's going to be it's going to behave the same exact way and uh, what we have here is again like I mentioned before using Flexbox in combination with media queries so media queries do not go away when you have Flexbox they're used together and in this case uh, looks like what they're doing is once once the screen gets below 760 pixels then they they put all of the content in a, a column and then they have this order property which by the way, the order property 
will be on your next hands-on test. Uh, the order property can change, uh, of course, the order that things are, are in. Uh, and so by default, the order is the normal flow. So this would be our first section, this would be our second section, this would be our third section. Keep in mind that our third section is green. Let's change the order of the, of the green one to be one, then red, So you can see you can change the order of them in their uh, alignment, if you will, with a simple order property. And so again, that is going to be something that you'll see on your next hands-on test, which tells you that your next hands-on test will have Flexbox, and your next hands-on test will have media queries. And all that's left here is a web page example that uses Flexbox. Okay. Uh, towards the end here, uh, there is a summary of all the different properties that we've covered. Again, we in uh, a 45 minute lecture, we covered a ton of information. Display flex, flex direction, flex wrap, justify content, align items, align content, flex basis, flex grow, flex drink order tons of information on how Flexbox works. There is a uh, complete guide to Flexbox on CSS Tricks. This is a good website. I've used it before. You've seen this website before in the curriculum. I would check that out, read that. And uh, you know, uh, before, I would, I would advise to read this before you do your homework and before you do your labs, okay? Reading this will help you get a start of course, your assignment tonight is to read the chapter, read chapter 9. You do have a homework assignment, and your homework assignment is this. To get practice with Flexbox and all of its properties, there's a simple game called Flexbox Froggy. Excuse me. This is simply practice using all the properties in Flexbox and getting essentially moving content around, the content being the frogs, and where you're moving them to is uh, the pad. And so, you know, they, they basically give you the, the answer here when, when you want to move your content to the end of the row, you're going to justify content flex end and the frog moves on to the pad and everyone's happy and you go on to the next level. There are 24 levels. This will be justify content center. Okay, so 24 levels, you complete the 24 levels, take a screenshot uh, of the kind of the graphic at the end that shows that you've completed it, upload that screenshot into your GitHub repository, and that'll be your homework for Chapter 9. Then we have a lab after that. Quick recording, lots of information. Read the chapter, read the CSS Tricks documents, practice on Flexbox Froggy, then go ahead and start on your Chapter 9 lab.